you are listening to the B Hey everybody, welcome to the podcast. It's a new episode. Today is January 29th, 2020. It is a Wednesday night. It's been a rough week, rough week. I'm very grateful right now. Let me just say this right off the gate. I'm very grateful to have this platform. Even if no one is... You know, I don't have a thousand listeners. I don't have a hundred listeners. Maybe ten. All right. I'm grateful for every one of you, but I'm very grateful for this platform right now to be able to speak my mind long form because I need to. I need this after this week. I'm talking about the uh the death of Kobe Bryant, his daughter, and the the other family two families and um and a matriarch of a family and it's been weighing on me all of the deaths i'm not a um uh, not a laker fan um i was never a kobe bryant fan in fact i rooted for him to lose repeatedly um he was the jordan of my era i grew up on jordan and then as a kid and then as a teen and a you know an adult i grew up with kobe bryant and Kobe Bryant was a dagger in a lot of the teams that I wanted to win, right? So that was my relationship with Kobe Bryant. Um, and the whole death of a sudden, you know, that I, at first I was just like, oh, wow. I saw it and I remember thinking, what, what a hoax. I remember somebody posting it and I'm thinking right away, like, why don't you check these things before you post it? You know, I'm so used to seeing them. So at first I thought it was a hoax and then... I saw that it was being covered, Um, you know, obviously we all know how it all spread out in the media, and um, then when I found out his daughter was on board, and there was other people, and then, you know, as all that stuff pulled out, I just, it, it, sometimes death, I don't know, there's been a couple of them, there's not, there has not been a celebrity death. Let me say this. I don't believe there's been a celebrity death that has impacted me like this. There's been personal deaths. Um, death of my cousin recently uh, is what sparked me, the social media break that I'm going to be doing in a couple days, the month of February. I'll be taking the entire month of February, deleting all the social media apps from my phone and I don't, you know, I just did the whole month. I just lived like a different person. Okay. And, um, that, that was sparked by a death of a family member, um, that took their own life and it kind of put me into, you know, got, it hit me hard and this has hit me hard too. This has impacted me. I've been pretty depressed. Um, because what happens is, uh, what happens is, is I play this out in my head. I play this out in my head. I've always done that anyway. I have this tendency in my head where I play out the darkest um, possible scenarios to the point where I cry. Um, Not, you know, I don't sometimes, uh, you know, in the shower and stuff, I, I, you know, it could make me cry really heavy. But what it does is it just gets me really emotional to the point where I get teary eyed very consistently. And I thought it was a. The only reason I'm even more comfortable talking about this is because I heard Gary Vee say that he does the same thing for motivation. That's sick fuck. Um, he does that for motivation. And me, I do that for depression. Um, I do that and it it just makes me... It just starts makes me... It makes me start feeling like the impending doom. That's been my fear. Um, as As a parent, it's been... It's grown... You know, becoming a parent, it's grown 
very, very much exponentially. It continues to grow this anxiety of um, impending doom for me because when I was young, I I dealt with that. I was the kid that was told their parent died. All right, when I was six years old, my dad died, and um, somebody had to tell me that. So I had I don't remember. I gotta talk to my mom and and ask her. Um maybe that might be helpful. Um and kind of have that conversation. Cause I've been on both sides. This is what really um gets me is I've been on both sides of this tragedy. Okay. We're talking about family members. We're talking about kids that have to find out their parents died, and we have to talk about parents that find out their kids die. <clears throat> And I've been on both sides of that. I, I, I've had to be told that my father died and I had to be the one to tell a family member that they lost their kid and lost their child. I had to break that news to a family member that their 12 year old child was dead and that they were deceased, and I had to be the one to to deliver that and feel that pain firsthand. So I didn't experience that pain. No, I I experienced that pain. It's it's not um it's not something that you really can explain. Uh, the kind of cut through your chest that that feels like, and um. It's something that you don't, you know, you you just don't ever want to wish anyone experience. That's something that somebody should never have to experience is the death of a child. And um, I can't imagine that pain. Um, so that that weighed on me. That's been weighing on me because I I internalized that and I start playing that in my head. So all week. Um, I've, de- you know, my whole program derailed, uh, I haven't been to the gym. Um, I've eaten 60 ounces. I've eaten 60 ounces of M&Ms in three days. All right. That's just the full, um, 50 ounces. I know that because they're 10 ounce bags and I've bought in five of them from Walgreens. All right. They're on sale. They're all Valentine's day. So I've eaten them with a lot of love and a lot of, um, um, I don't know. They just, you know, I mean, I just feel good. So that that's why that's impacted me. Now, the other side of this is for those of you that aren't privy to this world in the comedy world, there's been a complete and utter, uh, I don't want to say civil war. That's always so stupid. That's it's so overdone and overused. But there's just been so much in strife in the workplace, uh, in comedy, because some comics are dark comics. All right, let me tell you something, people that do or do not know about comedy or comedians. Comedians are some type of. There's some type of damage inside of you that makes you want to go up and and try to make people laugh like something's going on and a lot of people express themselves differently but mostly everybody in this world expresses themselves through comedy and through jokes in one format or another and some people made some dark jokes and you know what i didn't particularly care for them either okay me personally that's my opinion, all right? If I was telling everybody and people ask me what I thought about a Kobe Bryant joke two, three, or four hours after he died, I think, you know, I, I'm going through something right now. So for me, no, I don't like it, okay? Maybe in a different headspace, I would be right there with you, right? But I'm not. So I don't agree with it, but... I also don't need to tell you that I don't agree with it. Like, I don't, the the hostility the other way, it just, it's just, I feel like it's just more pain, right? Everybody's in pain and everybody reacts and deals with pain differently. And I'm not mad at anybody 
for the way that they have to express themselves. Because I had another comedian just call me out on Instagram, literally like within the hour, because of this guy, of Ari Shafir, what Ari Shafir said. And um, if I'm good with editing, I would put what, like I'd put a snippet of what he said in here and let you listen to it. And then. As I know, there's always a lot of like hate, pain in the world, and it's always a bunch of terrible stories. And every once in a while, there's a good story. A good story comes out. The guy who got away with rape got his today. Kobe Bryant is a god. I'm here in Charlotte, the home of the team that originally drafted him. Uh, maybe he wouldn't have raped that chick in Denver if he had been if he had stayed in Charlotte with the Hornets. But anyway, the point is, dude, it's like. I would just resume with the conversation right now. And then I would just continue to say that, like, I, like I said, I don't agree with it. When I heard it, like I told you, like, I'm feeling a certain type of way about this. So when I heard those words, it didn't make me feel good. It didn't make me feel good inside. I didn't like it. So it didn't, you know, I wasn't liking it. I didn't share it. I didn't have to talk about it. I just was like, ugh, and I kept it moving. You know what I mean? Like that's, I don't understand everybody's re need to like tell people what their opinion is and, and, and have to like, well, I mean, I get sharing your opinion, but why does everybody have to like feel the same way as you? Like if, because you're feeling this way, it's the only right way to feel. I feel like everybody reacts differently. Like, you know, like, and I, and again, I was, still mad i was mad at ari shafir i did not like him for a day or two like i since this since the whole thing i haven't like i was like oh man i really don't fucking like this guy anymore you know what i mean like you're just a real asshole you know to, to do this shit and then he posted on instagram a um a very meaningful um <clears throat> a thoughtful response and I'm, I'm just going to take the time to read it because I, I this is for me it, it was the difference that made me say all right well you know what I'm not mad at Ari anymore I still may have some feelings when I see his face or hear his voice I may still have reactions for it but I don't I'm not I'm not going to hold feelings. I just feel like I don't, there's no purpose for me in holding negative hostilities. Like, I don't feel like I need any more of that. The death and the way I'm feeling about these families and their response to it is enough for me. I don't need to feel the anger too. I'm already angry. Like, I'm already going to express a lot of this emotion through anger because I don't know how to, other than humor and sarcasm, which my humor and sarcasm comes out as anger anyway. So it's the way it's that it, it's expressed so i don't hold grudges i'm not holding grudges against anybody and their jokes and whatever you know i've unfollowed a lot of people just because i thought people were tasteless and i don't have any connection to you all right facebook friends people that i follow on facebook i don't i just don't have any connection to you and if my first interaction with you is this negativity like if you're just bringing up the rape if you're just bringing up negative things just to be you know what i mean like if there's not even humor behind it like the humor i get but if you're just being that like i don't know then I, I just don't need to see that shit on my feet i rather just you know whatever i don't need to hold grudges against anybody i'm not blocking anybody i'm not fucking fighting with anybody online that's just all unnecessary you know people grieve how they grieve they go through their emotions how they go through it and that's fine and what i'm gonna do is just keep my mouth shut and keep doing what i'm doing and keep working because that's all i can do is get up every day and fucking show up right that's that's it and then ride this wave because guess what 
this is going to pass, and then I'm going to be on the up again, and then that's going to pass, and I'm going to be down again, I'm going to be up again, I'm going to be down again, and guess what? So are you. That's life. All right? I recorded a whole other episode on uh, Sunday. Sunday, I recorded an episode right before I found out the news. I recorded an intro because I was... um, I wanted to get another episode out by tomorrow, and I was like, uh, for Thursday, like another midweek release, I was like, you know what, instead of just releasing all of them on a weekend, and then having three episodes out, I'll stagger them and release one, and I didn't have another episode recorded, so I had a uh, um, 2019 review that I did, and I reviewed all my shows, I reviewed all my comedy dates, I reviewed... um, uh, the producers and how I thought the show went and all that stuff. And I just recorded it, but I never put the intro and then, you know, um, edit it and put it and clean up the audio. I never did any of the stuff post-production to put it out. So I just had that, I was sitting on it. So I was like, you know what, let me record a quick intro and, um, you know, put it out. I'll record it for later in the week. And I did it, and as soon as I finished um, recording, and like I went upstairs and stuff, and and I found out the news, and I held it, and I didn't, I I did the post production, and I I didn't want to, I didn't want to release it because the next episode is this episode is number twenty four, <clears throat> and I didn't want to record it the same day. I had the same conversation with uh, Angel about re, you know why I want to stagger them is, and record intros is because I want to keep it relevant to the time that it's around. I don't want to, you know, re- record something. I want to put it out the same day, and I'm like, oh, oh it was a fun day. And meanwhile, you know, uh, Kobe Bryant died and, and his daughter and all these people, you know what I mean? Like, it just wouldn't mesh right. So, um you know, I've been watching everybody's reactions and seeing how everybody's been dealing with it. Uh, my nephew, who's a, uh, he's 14, 14 years old, and he's 6'8". <laughs> I think he's like 6'8", six, 6'9". Six, really, really good ball player. And I've watched him get scouted by, uh, you know, private high schools in the area and things like that. And he plays in... Um, you know, those young men leagues and uh, for different age groups and age groups older than him. And uh, it's really dope to see. And he wears number eight because of Kobe Bryant. And, you know, I know he's going through it. So everybody in the whole world, you know, I'm watching people online, too. And, you know, one of the things that did bother me, I did respond to something. I did something did elicit a response from me. And it's people that wondering why. Kobe Bryant is being talked about more than everybody else. It's because people die every day and it's not major news. But nobody else has a camera or, uh, you know, the whole world, millions of people with eyes on them since they were 17 years old. Imagine being 17 years old and millions of people have their eyes on you and everything you do. Everything is criticized. Everything is is under a microscope all the time. People are worried about what you're doing, the decisions you're making, and everything affects all these other people behind you. Because remember, when you have all that attention behind you, you're also generating a large amount of revenue, not only for yourself, but for a lot of people around you. You affect so many people, the people that have to uh, sell your sneakers, the people that have to sell your merchandise, the people that have to make all the stuff, the people that have to distribute all the stuff, that have to drive it all around. So many people, when you generate billions of dollars, all right, owners of ma- owners of, of sports teams are making billions of dollars based on the popularity that you generate. And you're making hundreds of millions of dollars. And mer- you know what I mean? Because of the attention that you generate. You're not just anybody. You're not just someone that just signed up for a job. All right. You're somebody that worked to develop a craft, an art, 
I don't care what you think about sports as far as it just being somebody bouncing a ball and throwing it in a hoop. You're fucking wrong. It is a skill that you have to develop, that you have to work hard at, that you have to do things that you as another person won't do in whatever field you're in. There's very few of you that are criticizing why this person generates this amount of revenue that generate any kind of thing in your field or in any world. You know what I'm saying? That's why millions of people aren't watching you. That's why millions of people aren't watching the other people. Those other people didn't score 60 points in the last game of their career. All right. Like a beast. All right. Watch that. Watch Kobe Bryant in the last game of his career. If you watch anything else in your whole life to ever even understand who Kobe Bryant is as a person and as a player, all you need to do is watch one game, and that's his last game and of his whole career. That's all you need to do if you need to know Kobe Bryant. is that You don't even need to watch the whole game. Just watch highlights of what he did. It's not just the numbers. All right. It's not just the numbers. It's not just the skill. All right. It's showing determination inside of you, character, uh, work ethic. All right. Something that us normal people and the people that don't achieve greatness. I'm not talking about just sports. I'm talking about in anything that those of us that do not achieve greatness in anything is because we don't work at it like that. All right. It's not just talent. He was the definition of talent plus work ethic, all right? When everybody else was at the club, after the game, he was shooting jump shots in the gym repetitively, all right? There's just something that you, there's there's something that you just can't put a, a metric on it, and that's why they make an ungodly amount of money, all right? They don't work, and then, you know, and then you have the other people that are like, oh, the military and policemen don't get that. No, they don't, because that's not what they fucking signed up for, all right? You want that shit? You go on American Idol, and you go on fucking America's Got Talent. You don't go to fucking your local police department, all right, for fucking fame and attention. No, you go there for whatever fucking paycheck and pension that they fucking promise you to defend people, because that's what you're willing to risk your life for, not just the fucking paycheck check you're actually willing to risk your life to help other people it's not just attention all right they get plenty of attention and respect from us oh, man i'm so happy to have this platform to be able to voice my opinion in my little fucking wooden table in my little wooden basement all right with my fucking no no name have an ass <laughs> no credential have an ass opinion all right but guess what? It's on this fucking recording. It's in this microphone. And then I put it on the internet and anybody can hear it. And then the people that agree with me can agree with me. And the people that disagree with me can go fuck themselves. <laughs> oh, man. I'm telling you, like, this is... This feels so much better. And, and today I almost did it. I, I was on the... web. I was laughing... Because I was on my way home and I was like, all right, you know, I'm going to go back to the gym today. I'm just going to do a little bit of work, make, you know, and feel good just a little bit. Like I was like the, I negotiated with myself to go to the gym to do the minimal. I'm just like, you know what? I'll go a little bit on the elliptical five minutes and just warm up. We just could go through the motions. I don't need to do anything. I'm just going to go through the motions. I'll do a few sets of this, a few sets of that, ba -ba -ba -ba. get a nice little pump going and then we'll go home. Right. And I just drove like, and I'm listening to, I was listening to whatever fucking podcast. And all of a sudden I was like, two or three blocks away from my house. And I was like, shit, bro. I subconsciously just missed the gym. I just skipped it. So, um, um, uh, that's, you know, that's a good step in the right direction is the willingness to take action. And then, you know, the absent mindedness that can't help <clears throat> that just, that shit just happens. But, um, but I was willing to take action, so that's good. Finally, Monday, Tuesday, I was like, Fuck, oh, my God, I was so, like, I just want to come home and lay and wrap myself in a blanket. Like, I don't know how to describe it, 
And this is something that's been developing more as I get older. And I've never talked about it, you know, with, with, I haven't really talked about this with anybody, uh, you know, my, my wife and, you know, kind of my family, like my brother, um, you know, some of my friends, but not something I talk about in great, like length, like online and stuff like that. It's hard. It's hard to struggle because I still deal with the shame of it i'm still um i still have that machismo mind that that um i can't show weakness i can't show vulnerability because then i'm not alpha i'm not um you know i'm not a man that latin machismo shit so i'm still dealing with fighting that and being able to you know be honest not even be honest it's just be open about it because i'm 100 percent honest about that when i talk with people that know me and you know but i don't know like as i'm getting older this shit affects me more and um and it's it's been I don't know, like years of it. And I don't want to go see no fucking therapist. I don't want to pay to have to sit there and talk about this shit. Like, I'd rather talk about it here. And, you know, and talk about it in, like, this kind of forum. And talk about it on stage. Express myself through my art. Um, And, you know, develop that more. My art of expressing myself through my humor and and getting more in touch with that and putting more work into that and seeing how and being more active man i gotta make sure i get these four days in the gym that really does help those of you that struggle with depression too that activity getting active um like i said man i'm i I, that's why i joined planet fitness too not only because of the ten dollars a month, but because I don't have to like I can just go in there and not have that um that that mentality uh, that I have to go in there and kill myself um, that I have to go in there and you know uh, drop you know ten thousand sets and you know you know what I mean like just go in there and overwork myself I can just go in there and do do something right something's better than nothing and that's something and the habit of it and and the feeling of that accomplishment does make you feel better and getting that blood pumping um i was doing that row machine that row machine's a bitch i don't know if you, you remember that row machine from um that kevin spacey was using when he was frank underwood in uh house of cards that row machine that he has in the house, uh, when I saw that thing at the gym, I was like, I want to try that. I want to get, you know, and then I tried it, and I was like, that's just a bitch. So I do like two and a half minutes straight. I try to get like a song, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to do the length of this song, and that'll be the um, the amount of time I'll do. And I'll try to get like to two and a half minutes straight of rowing, and, and my uh, my my chest is pumping, my lungs are, are screaming for air, and, like, sometimes I get sick, and, and, but when I leave, like, the, the way I feel that coming down is, um, it's so much better, uh, it's, like, such a better release, so I have to make sure, I have to make that a priority, because that's the number one medicine for depression, natural medicine, um, you know, the other stuff, is natural too, but damn, if that's not the the best way to uh, to medicate, over medicate, you know, self medication is is good, but uh, the variety is what's healthy. So um, we're gonna continue with that, and um, and that's it. I got uh, shows lined up. Like I said, I got this social media break coming up. Um, so this is just going to be a little quick episode I'm throwing up out there now. Um, I was going to repeat, I was going to read this Ari Shafir thing. I'm not going to read it now. Um, you can go on his Instagram. You'll see it. Ari, at Ari Shafir or at 
Shafir, Ari Shafir, A-R-I-S-H-A-F-F-I-R. And you could look at what he said um, or not. Or you can just say, fuck him, and that's your right, too. I don't care. Like, I I really don't want to argue. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't need to. I, I don't. You know, I don't need a platform. I don't need to have a position. I don't need to take sides. I don't need that. If that, if that reaction to you, or if my reaction, or if how I feel, or how I carry myself, is not up to anyone's standards, I don't fucking care. All right, like that's that's that on that too. All right, like I don't have a problem with anyone, but if you have a problem with me, I don't care. All right, that's your problem. That's not our problem. That's your problem. All right, I don't need anything from anyone. So that's that. And um, speaking of what I do need, what I do need you to know, and this time I actually think I am prepared to tell you is these upcoming dates. All right, so today's Wednesday, the 29th. I'll post this tomorrow on thir- you know, the 30th, but tomorrow I got Zona Tribeca out there in uh, Greenwich, on Greenwich Street in Greenwich Village in the city. Um, dope show ran by uh, Eric Miller and Kevin Sanchez. Um, that's tomorrow. Then the following week, you know, Laugh It Up Tuesdays, every single Tuesday, Nikki's Bar and Grill, Little Ferry, New Jersey, uh, but next Friday, I also have Hell Yeah Comedy Show, the Comedy Kegger over at the Wawa Social Club, North Bergen. Uh, that's going to be hosted by, I believe, Aaron Wahlberg or Josh Wells. One of those two motherfuckers is hosting it. And um, that's going to be a dope lineup. Really good show. $10 at the Wawa Social Club. The show is free. You can just come and just chill and watch the show. And then have beers, but there's a ten dollar all you can drink kegger. That's why they call it the comedy kegger. It's ten bucks all you can drink until the keg is kicked. Nah, me. Uh, then we have uh, what else we got? Uh, uh, I have a trend coffee and tea house February. No, I have a show before that. Look at me. I have raveling thread comedy show Staten Island uh, Rosebank Tavern. That is Nick Cara and John Kirshner, Raveling Thread Comedy Show. That's a dope show out there. That's another free comedy show. Um, I think they just celebrated two years or three years, or they had like their 300th show or something. I don't know. But they just celebrated some shit, so congratulations to them. Those are some good good dudes, good guys, really great guys. Uh, yeah, so February 24th, we got the... Trend Coffee and Tea House that shows ran by uh, the lovely Esther Cohen and uh, that is Trend Coffee Tea House in Montclair 411 Bloomfield Ave shows at about 8 p.m. and I saw the lineup Angela Sharp's headline and she's got a guitar and a sexy set uh, so that's good stuff and then um Station Bar and Grill out there in Cranberry, New Jersey. Uh, we have the comedy show ran by Mike Bonner. Lovely, lovely man. 8 p.m. out there at Cranberry, New Jersey. And then uh, I have Tiff's Grill Ale House. Tiff's Comedy Club. That's a, a nice um, dope spot. Nice, dope, dope spot that I hear about. It's going to be my first time performing there. So that's over... Um, yeah, that's at that's at that's at, at seven p.m. out there. I think something like that. Those are that's that's a ticket show, right? Tickets are on sale for that show. You got to find out. I don't know where that is. You probably go on their website or something. But hey, look, guys, I had dates this time. I was organized. You like that? Um, yeah. So those are the shows I got coming up, and um, that's it, guys. I'm uh, I'm really happy. If you listen this far, thank you so much. First of all. Um, if you are going through something, I you know, I always kid around, DM somebody else. <laughs> if you're going through something and you need to talk and you have a problem, DM somebody else. But um, you can hit me up, and uh, I'm actually a good listener. And um, it would inspire me, let's just say that, if you um, 
I don't have, I may not have advice. I may not have an answer for you, but I know that sometimes when I share my problems or if I finally open up about something, sometimes me just saying it is, um, sometimes me just saying it will make me feel better. You know what I mean? Like sometimes just me saying what is bothering me gives me a, another perspective on it. Just like verbalizing it and sharing it. Um, you know, things in the dark hurt you, right? You're always scared of things in the dark. So you got to put some light on it and share it with somebody else. Um, whoever it is, sometimes sometimes I hold on to things and I don't share them with the people I should be sharing them with. And, um, I, you know, it makes me feel alone. And then I share, um, I can share it with a stranger. Like I've done that before. Like just, um, you know, sometimes I, I, I'm mostly a reserved person, but sometimes I share something like I get into like a conversation with a stranger, like at the grocery store or something, you know, somewhere weird that you just happen to stop and actually talk to somebody and have like a real conversation. And the next thing you know, like, I'm like talking about something like real personal and, you know, you share it and you leave it there and like, it's like you never see this person again. And it's almost like, um, almost like, a uh, like saying something or writing something down and burning it, you know, like you get it off your chest and then you don't have to worry about looking at it again. But this, that's what this was for me, um, being able to get on this mic and, um, express myself and express my feelings that I, um, that I've been holding in. I haven't really, you know, I've expressed it to a few people. A few people have shared the same feelings with me um, about how they've been going through it. So, um, you know, it sucks. You know, I can't imagine having to live with that every day, you know, with the family and stuff like that. So, um, you know, but definitely my heart goes out to them. And, um, that's it. They set up a foundation. I saw, um, you know, they set up some foundation for the family. Um, you know, so I'm sure you can find out if you're interested in that. I'm trying to figure out a way to wrap this up, guys. I just, you know, again, uh, this, this life is too short for the negative shit. I try to keep the positivity. Um, keep a positive outlook on things. And keep showing up every day. And share your problems. Share your problems with someone, all right? Figure out a space. Look at me. I'm a stranger. If you found this and you're listening to this and you're a stranger, you can share shit with me, all right? And if it's funny, I'll make fun of you about it. <laughs> nah, I'm not, I don't know. I might. Uh, if, you're, if, you know, if you're into that shit, sometimes you need to laugh about some shit. But um, that's it. Uh, love everybody. Love yourselves. Uh, and love yourself in America. All right? Peace.